Hello everyone, welcome to our YouTube channel, IIPS, the Educational Incubator. I am Sunil Rawas, your host for today with the lesson of production possibility. And this topic, production possibility, is coming under our entire video series of Introduction Economics. And if you haven't watched it yet, go find the link above and check our entire video series of Introduction Economics, where you can find the other concepts in regarding to the economics introduction. And this subtopic of production possibility is been divided into two parts as part one and part two, where today, through this video, we're going to discuss the part one of production possibility. And yet, if you haven't subscribed us, go hit the subscribe button and hit the bell icon so you will be notified when we upload another interesting informative videos like this. And with proceeding, let's start the lesson of production possibility part one with Sunny Rawas. Starting on with the definition of production possibility, the production possibility is identified as the maximum production capacity of the economy. In an economy, the maximum production capacity is identified as the production possibility. And this production possibility is determined by two main important things. The first one is the stock of resources. The stock of resources of an economy will determine the production possibility or the production capacity of the economy. The other one is the productivity of the resources. Though you have got so much of resources and if your productivity is low, it would hinder the production capacity of the economy. Because of that, the productivity of the resources is also as important as the stock of resources. When we derive this production possibility, we have to make several assumptions, rather five main assumptions. The first one is that we assume that the, all the resources which, are, which prevail and available in this economy are used to produce maximum of two goods. Maximum of two goods. It means you either can produce one good or else you can use entire stock of resources to produce maximum of two goods. The other one is constant resource level. We are focusing about resources, the stock of resources, and we believe and we assume that this resource level won't change and it will held constant. The other one is the constant technology. The level of technology in this economy, the considering particular economy, won't change and it will be held constant. The other one is the production efficiency of full production and full employment. Regarding production efficiency, we will be talking in detail in a thorough manner in the part two of the production possibility lesson, which you can find the link above. And in, in there, we will be talking a bit more in detail. But to give a little understanding, a sound understanding regarding the production efficiency, it is identified that the entire resources, the resource stock of the economy is fully utilized. And even we assume that we are at a maximum capacity and the entire resources are fully utilized. That is identified as the production efficiency. And the last assumption is that we assume this production possibility is only applicable for a given period of time. The production possibility of 2001 is not equal to 2002 because we are only focusing for a, a given limited period of time. So that can be a one year or that can be one month or even can be one day. So we derive the production possibility only for a given period of time. So these are the five main assumptions and, and we do have got two determinants which determine the maximum production capacity of the economy. The production capacity and the production possibility can be denoted in a different informative ways. One way, one very highlighting and very useful way is a production possibility curve or as production possibility frontier. Production possibility frontier or the PPF is a curve that illustrates the variations in the amounts that can be produced of two products if both depend upon the same finite resources for their production. What this definition means is that the production possibility will denote in a curve where the different combinations or different variations 
which the economy can achieve with the given resources and with the current technology level, the constant technology level, how they can continue to have different variations. In simply, it will denote in a curve, in a curve with two axes of having two goods, in a curve with the different combinations where you can go for the next slide proceedings where you can find the graphical formation of this production possibility curve. Going with the other one, the PPF is a decision making tool for managers and policy makers deciding on the optimum product mix for the company or the country. This is used not only in the policy matters but even in the corporate sector which will decide the entire production capacity or the production possibility of a company or else in an economy or a country. Even more, the PPC demonstrate that the production of one commodity may increase only if the production of other commodities decreases. This is a concept which we identified as opportunity cost. The PPF, the PPC is always in accordance and in align with the opportunity cost concepts. You can find the link above, go and check the opportunity cost, cost video you can learn in detail thoroughly about opportunity cost. Now, as I mentioned in the very first thing, very first bullet point, PPC is a curve, a graphical representation. Let's see how we can derive and define in a graphical manner the PPCs. The shape of the PPC is three different ways as the concave to origin straight line to origin and the convex to origin. So this shape of the PPC is highly linked with the concepts of opportunity cost where you will learn in our other videos of opportunity cost. But as this is the part one of the production possibility and the production possibility curve, you just need to have a idea, a rough idea, a sound idea regarding the shapes of the PPCs. So these are the three main shapes where you can find the PPCs. Moreover, in economics, we use the model of concave to the origin PPC to illustrate different concepts of economics. Now, let's see how we can illustrate such concepts of economics in a PPC. Right, the first two. Now, we're going to illustrate two kinds of different kinds of illustrations one is a point outside the curve like the point a the other one is the point b which is a point inside the curve now let's see with the point inside the curve the point b which denotes the point b a point which is inside the curve a point inside the curve is basically representing a unemployed underemployed or, or else a recession kind of a situation where a point inside the curve is like where though you have the full capacity or the full employment level full production level through this curve the economy or the corporate is only behaving and only operating a point inside it means you can see there is a gap though you can operate in here though you can operate at this curve you are only operating inside the curve. So, the possible reasons for such a inside curve operation is might be unemployment because you do have the employed, you can, you can use these resources to be employed, but due to the prevailing unemployment in the economy, you might be operating somewhere in here. Unemployment or else even underemployment. Even more, Economic recession, which is a short-term concept, economic recession can al also be denoted by a point inside the curve. Also, other, other to these identified concepts, any other short-term bad impact, which can be like a strike or a bad weather condition, a flood, which is a short-term thing, we can denote a point inside the curve so that those concepts, when those points will denote and depict a short term low level of production and low level of employment of resources in an economy. The other one is the point A of point outside the curve. So these are also short term which will identified as the economic boom 
or as an expansion, a short term expansion of the economy. And even it is identified as the unlimited nature of the bones. And you can find the gap in between the curve to the dot, this dot, this is, this is the want, the dot A is the want, and you can find there's a gap, and this gap is identified as the scarcity in this economy, because we know scarcity is defined as the limited nature of resources in fulfilling the unlimited nature of wants. So you can see the unlimited nature of wants and the limited nature of resources, because we, at the very beginning, we assume that the resource consumption and the resource level and the resource stock in this economy is constant. So we can find the limited resources with the unlimited bonds. So this gap is identified as the scarcity. Moving on with the other illustrations, now we are focusing about the shift of the PPC. So we know we first in the other one we identified a point a point inside or outside the curve. Now we are focusing about the shift of the curve. Either it can be right hand side or it can be left hand side. Now let's see the rightward shift. So we can identify the rightward shift as the resource stock increase. So we know this is our resource stock, the full capacity at the constant resource stock. By any chance, if the resource stock increase, it will denote by a rightward shift. Not only that, a technological advancement will also denote a rightward shift in an economy through the PPC and even the foreign direct investments because we know when the foreign direct investments inflow to the economy from a foreign country the resource level the resource stock of the economy will automatically get increased so during such a way during such examples the PPC would shift rightwards not only that though you have got a limited or constant resource stock Either your productivity of the resources, the output productivity of the resources, the efficiency of the resources might increase. During such a case, even the shift of the PPC can be occurred in the rightward manner. And also the continuous expansion of your production possibility, the continuous expansion of your GDP, the economic growth, the continuous economic growth, the long term economic growth is also identified with the rightward shift. And the leftward shift or as the moving inwards is a long term downturn or resource depletion we can identify it because the rightward shift was identified as a resource stock increase. Then the leftward shift the other way around is identified as a resource stock depletion. And even not only that as the productivity was increasing we can identify that the productivity decreasing nature will be denoted in a point inside the curve. What we need to know in this little trick is that there are two types of illustrations. One is point illustrations and the curve shift illustrations. In point inside the curve or point outside, the point illustrations are identified as in a much short term manner where it is a short term concept, a short term phenomena, a short term incidence where the shift of the curves, either it's rightward or else inwards, leftwards, is a much more long term and a macroeconomic manner. So that is the way to identify whether it's an in, inward shift or outward shift or rather a point inside the curve or point outside the curve. That is the logic behind the identification of illustrations of the concepts through a PPC. Now let's have a much advanced illustration. This is, you can see, this is also type of a shift of the curve, a rightward shift. But in here you can see the rightward shift is only was visible, only can be visible through only a one axis, only through a one axis. This is because we can identify it as also a shift only in one axis. Example, uh, advancement in technology only for technology, the advancement in technology. This is, I so assume this is the technological goods. So the advancement in technology is only happening, only occurring for these technology goods, not in the agriculture area. So this is a rightward shift only from one axis. The other one is also the same scenario, which is a shift only in one axis, but this is the decrease in resource stock of agriculture due to 
tsunami. So we know due to a tsunami, resource might get depleted, might get lost for economy. So this is only happening through a one axis. So in a such case, when you have been given concepts and incidents like this, you have to argue whether this is one off or else this is happening for the entire thing. Depending upon the background of the incidents and the concept, you can denote whether it's shifting from both of the axis or from the one of the axis. You can check the link above. You can find the MCQ discussion done, specially done regarding covering our entire chapter of introduction economics. You can find similar questions and much more uh, explanatory questions in regard to these concepts of PPC and specially in regarding the uh, point inside the curve, point outside the curve and these shifts. So if you haven't watched it yet, you can find the link above, go and check and do those sums by yourself and you can find the discussion in our YouTube channel and you can join with us. And that's it for today with this lesson of production possibility of part one. And we will see you through the part two video of the production possibility curves and production possibilities. And thank you for watching us and like, share, comment below if you have any more issues and if you need any more clarifications regarding these concepts of economics or any other educational matters. And if you haven't subscribed us for yet, why don't you subscribe us for more informative videos like this and get in touch with us. And thank you once again and see you soon.